Hello world and welcome to 1.20, where today we're going to be covering Ad Astra, a space-based mod where you can fulfill your dreams of becoming a true astronaut. To start off in the tier 1 stage we are going to need to get a hammer with some iron and sticks and then we are going to need to get some steel which we require a blast furnace and then some coal and some iron, it's as simple as that. Next we're going to want a handful of machines, the first thing we're going to need is some iron plates however by smashing down some iron ingots with a hammer and then we're going to want to make the coal generator with a furnace and a whole load of iron. The coal generator is going to be a way of creating power by burning, as you guessed it, coal. As well as this, we're going to need the compressor made with two pistons and some more iron plates, and this is going to allow us to automate making iron plates or steel plates. To start off with, you are going to need these blocks to be adjacent. All we have to do is simply put coal inside of here like so. It has an internal buffer of 9,000 units, and this can be automatically transferred on any different side, and we have this right next to the compressor, which also has an internal buffer of 9,000, and all we have to do is simply put either iron or steel inside of here in order to make ourselves some plates. Now, both coal and uh, ingots can be hoppered in to both of these machines, and then the plates can be hoppered out of these machines as well for early game automation. But now let's get into how we actually make a rocket because we already have everything we need in order to make a rocket First we're going to need the NASA workbench made out of a steel block, redstone blocks, uh, steel plates, torches, levers and a crafting table And now this NASA block is going to be our basically our crafting table for making any tier rocket There are multiple tiers of rockets, we are obviously making the first one which is entirely made of steel there are many components we need to make steel, um, the steel rocket, the first one is going to be a rocket nose cone uh, which is going to require a lightning rod and some plates, then we're going to need some fins which is just more plates, and then we're going to need to actually make the engine the, uh, and some tanks. The steel tank is made with a bucket, iron rod and some steel plates, the iron rod is just simply made with two little bits of iron plating. To then make the engine we're going to need a fan made like so as well as a engine frame with more iron rods and steel plates. Slap all of it together and we get ourselves some engines. Once we have all the components however we are also going to need to get ourselves a landing pad made with a load of iron and steel plates. Now you should make two of these as one is going to be used like so in order to get ourselves to the moon but then we're also going to need a second one to get back from the moon. But once we have all of these different things in, in tow we are also going to need some steel blocks which are just simply made as well as any other blocks and they are put in this configuration here with nose cone at the top, fins on the side, two steel tanks engine at the bottom and then six steel blocks and when this is made we simply pick this up we have a big loud bang and we have our first rocket it's rather large this will just be placed down onto your um, landing pad here and if you hold shift right click you will have this internal inventory so we're not able to fly yet because we're going to need a handful of different things and one of which is going to be fuel in order to make fuel we're going to need a resource in the world which is oil oil is found in any ocean biome and is basically this big spouting thing out of here if you do have a mod that can automatically pump anything out at this point i would highly recommend pumping this stuff out but you may um, end up getting a little bit of uh, water involved so you do want to come here maybe with some buckets you are going to want at least six buckets of this oil to begin with. The reason when you want six buckets of oil is because you need to one convert this into fuel but then it takes three buckets of fuel to get into the moon and then it takes three buckets of fuel to get back from the moon so you need six in total. However to get fuel we're going to need a brand new machine and this is the fuel refinery made with just some steel plates, um, two buckets and a furnace. This needs to be powered with your coal generator so do the same setup as the compressor and all you have to do is simply place oil buckets in here on the side and then this will convert into a fuel. It's a one to one between oil and fuel, it's very simple. Just like so. To get the fuel out all you have to do is place your buckets on the side here and then you will be able to get your buckets out. Great, so now our rocket can be propelled but we need to be able to breathe. As we know the moon doesn't exactly have any oxygen for us to breathe there. This is where we're going to need a spacesuit. To make the space boot, we just need a heck of a load of steel and glass and a little bit of wool as well. To make the helmet, it's just simply five steel as if you were making a regular helmet with a glass pane. For the trousers, you're going to need a little bit of wool. For the shoes, you're going to need wool. But for the actual chest piece, this is where you're going to need a few more components. One is going to be the oxygen tank made with some steel plating and an iron rod. You're going to need some oxygen gear. This is going to be allowing you to breathe. We're going to need some more plates and some more iron. And then we slap this all together to get our space suit. Now that we have our space suit, we are looking rather dapper. When you complete the space suit, as you can see on the side here, it says two oxygen tanks. That is going to be how much oxygen we have on our person for allow us to breathe. As you can tell, it is completely empty right now, so we need to get ourselves some oxygen. This is where we're going to need another new machine, the oxygen loader. Made with a load of components we've already shown already, the oxygen loader is going to be able to turn water into oxygen. 
oxygen. For this, we're going to need our coal generator once again, and in here, we're going to need to get ourselves some water. Now, well, you are going to need many, many buckets because to get one bucket, it was obviously a thousand miller buckets, you only get about 100 to 150 of oxygen. So, you're going to want to do this a lot. Now, you can actually just hop this all through. So, if you do have a big chest like this, you will be able to just have it all piped in like this. If you do again have a mod that allows you to pump in any fluids, then I would recommend you do that, of course. Then when we get ourselves our oxygen, what we can do is simply put our spacesuit in here and it will fill it up. Now I've got it hoppered out, so it's automatically hoppered out of here. But I also recommend you build some extra oxygen tanks. These oxygen tanks are going to be able to give you extended time of breathing and they each hold 500 oxygen per tank. So just with one tank and the spacesuit, we've got 1,500, but I do recommend you get a little bit more. But with that, that means we are now ready for the moon. Kind of. To start off with, we want to shift right click and we want to put some fuel buckets into here. We're going to again want three in here in total, and then we're going to want to bring three with us. So we want to keep that in here. I also do recommend, obviously, you keep a handful of tanks with you as well. And then I think we should also get some other things. As a standard, you should probably take some tools and some food with you as you would in any Minecraft. But something to note is as there is no oxygen, ordinary tools, ordinary torches will not work on the moon. You will need to make soul torches instead or bring glowstone as your source of light. But besides that, we are now ready to go to the moon. So all we have to do is simply right click to get inside of here. And as you can see, we now have a new icon on the side. This is our basically our landing. And what we want to do is now simply press space in order to fly to moon. T minus 10 and we are going to be off. Blast off. Once we reach orbit, we're going to be greeted with a brand new screen. This here is our solar system. All we have to do is click here and it will show us a pl all the places we can go in the solar system. At tier one, we can only go to the moon. But as you can see, there are many other planets where we are able to go to next. All we have to do is click on Earth and then we have a handful of options. We can go straight back to Earth if we so wanted to, but that's kind of pointless. So we want to go to the moon. Something else we'll eventually be able to do as well is create the space station. But we're going to need some brand new resources such as Dash in order to actually make our space station first. But basically, the space station is going to be an in-orbit base that is designed to be expandable. But right now, it's not exactly going to be livable. So let's head to the moon. When we get to the moon, we are going to have this warning sign. If you do not slow down by holding space, you will die. It does take a little bit of time to get there, so I recommend you wait for a little bit. But as you start seeing the floor down here, you want to hold down space, and this is going to slow you right down. When we get all the way down here, though, we do want to still be very careful because there could be very mobs. Ooh, that was very close there. And all we have to do now is hold shift to get out. Now, down when you're down here, we just have our lunar lander here. If we hold shift and right click, we'll have all our inventory. We can get our rocket back, we can get our fuel back, and we can get our tanks. To get rid of this lunar lander, all we have to do is punch it. Now that we're on the moon, what is the main reason we are here? We are trying to get Dash. Dash is going to be our new re ingredient that we can get on the moon. As well as this, we can get cheese and we can get ice moon shards. However, the ice shards we're not going to be using as of just yet. Cheese, when you smelt it, it will just turn into ordinary cheese and you can use it as a food source. But Dash is going to be our new ingredient and it's basically going to be our tier 2 component to make new machines and the tier 2 rocket. While you are around in the moon, though, you will come into these guys. These guys are Larians. This one's actually a mob. This is corrupted Larian. You don't want to go into near him, but you will find Larian bases. Obviously, we have low gravity down here, so this uh, this ladder might take a little bit of time. Larians are basically our villagers on the moon. They can cultivate things. They can obviously make some warped stuff, as you can see here, and they have chests around with loads of different stuff for us, one of which being cheese, as well as uh, moon shards and other things. Sometimes they do actually have dash as well. You have multiple different types of bases. This is, seems to be one type of village where they have bells as well. There is a second type as well which more comes in the shape of a tower. These towers do have multiple tiers, and these guys have their different village types. There are bar barrels in here, but again, the main loot is going to be really at the top, where we have all of their stuff that is stored. Here you'll get some food, some more cheese, some soul torches. I do believe you do have the chance of getting dash in here as well. The last thing you may potentially find are these structures right here. These are going to be dungeons. These dungeons are only found on the... Uh, or moon dungeons are obviously only found on the moon. And they are basically your... Uh, these are basically your challenge for the moon. 
In here you will have multiple enemies, they will be Larians, as you can see, and there are multiple spawners as well. Sometimes you may have to go quite deep to find Desh down here, I found it at negative Y42, as well as that round here, this is what you would see when you are looking for ice shards. Now that you're full of cheese and Desh, it's time to head back home with the Lunar Lander that you brought with us, your launch pad, your rocket, and then we want to fill this up with some fuel to get back home, and all we have to do is simply right click and launch once again. When we land, or when we go out into orbit, it will take us back to the same solar screen, and all we have to do is click on Earth to get back home. Much the same as when you're on the Earth, as when you are on the Moon, you do need to hold safe space to uh, stop you from dying on impact when you are coming back into orbit. So now we can see, we are landing. You're not always going to come back in the exact place you took off. In fact, I have landed in the same place that I was here earlier. Hold shift to simply get out again, and then you can get all the items you need out of here again. Not that there is a lot. But congrats, you've now reached the next tier of Ad Astra, tier two. This I'm gonna call the Dash Age. The Dash Age is gonna allow us to get some brand new materials here. The first couple of things we're gonna want is actually the uh, water pump. The water pump is gonna allow us to stop actually needing the need to hopper in water buckets. This is made with two dispensers, a dash plate and a hopper, and this is going to actually need to be powered. So I reckon when we use our brand new resource here, the solar panel. The solar panel is made with blue stained glass some dash plates and some steel plates and this is going to allow us to actually generate 15 electrical units per tick when we are on the earth depending on the con or country depending on the planet you are on you are actually going to generate more power so the more the closer you are to the sun so if we say we do go to venus you're going to actually generate more power as well as that if you are in a space station you're going to be closer to the sun and you're again going to generate more power so it's 15 for a constant on the earth but when you are in other planets, it could be less or it could actually be more. To make the water pump work, you are going to need an infinite source as you see here, and the water pump is going to need to be placed one block above it. Then you're going to need your solar panel right next to it or your coal um, oven. Now, as you can see here, I'm using a brand new thing here. We have now got dash fluid pipes as well to go into our oxygen loader, which is also being powered by a solar panel. Now these pipes, they are made with some glass and some dash frames, and you're also going to want to get ourselves a wrench made with some dash uh, plates as well. By default, when you place the, any of these little dash things down, they will automatically connect, but they won't actually automatically suck anything out, and they will not automatically input in as well. For this, you're going to need the wrench, of course, and all you have to do is right click on the connection, and it will say this is insert, and then where it is on extract. So that is how you automatically extract and insert into your different items. Something as well as pipes we actually have is also cable. Now, you can get cable at tier zero with steel cable, which I didn't mention earlier, but this is just simply made with some steel plates and some copper, and this transfers 124 uh, FE per tick. And then what we can actually do is upgrade this with dash to 4096. Uh, FE per tick with just some dash plates and some copper. It's why I didn't mention it because you might as well just go straight to dash anyway because you don't really need a lot of machines uh, to put power around at the early tier but if you want something a bit cheaper to start off with you can obviously use steel cable. As well as that you may want to now get yourselves an oxygen distributor. An oxygen distributor is made with some fans, an oxygen loader, two tanks and another oxygen gear and this is going to be a way of actually oxygenating any sort of base that you're going to build either on the space station or on other planets. If we enter in here we have got a basic setup. On top we have got ourselves to have a loads of different solar panels on top all connected through different cables and they are going to a water pump and then we're going to an oxygen distributor. The oxygen distributor is going to do the exact same thing as the oxygen loader except you cannot actually take any oxygen out. However this is going to be pumping oxygen into the atmosphere. To see where it's pumping all you have to do is click show here and then we'll get some bubble effects. Now these bubble effects that's going to show you obviously the area that is being oxygenated and with this it actually tells us how much is actually being oxygenated at a time. At the moment we're using 8 FE per tick, although it is flicking up to 13 every now and then, and we're outputting 3 millibuckets of uh, oxygen per tick, or per second as well. Uh, currently the oxygen blocks that are oxygenated is 203 blocks that are oxygenated, but this can go all the way up to 3000. Now the way we know and we can stress test this is by opening this door. Once this door's opened, this is now trying to oxygenate all this area, as you can see here. It's quite a large area that this thing can do, so you are going to want to make sure you're sealed, because as you can see we're now doing 120 to 25 FE per tick, and using 50 millibuckets of oxygen per second. So we are going to be stress testing this water pump a lot, which is where you're going to need obviously a lot more solar panels, but the amount we have here is actually um, sustaining that. 
So we want to click that shut. Now, when we have this shut, we do actually still want the rest of our base to be oxygenated. And we have that achieved with one simple block, the vent. The vent simply made with some iron rods. This is going to allow us to basically put our oxygen into the next room. What I could do, obviously, is have this blocked and have the door always open. But the moment this door is shut for aesthetic reasons, this is now going to not be oxygenated and I could start suffocating. So we definitely want your base on the moon or space station to be oxygenated as you see here. Also, this is a way of obviously keeping the amount of oxygen and power you are using down to a minimum. Now, bear in mind, if you are going to leave the base, you are probably going to want to have some sort of airlock like this without any vent, because that way you can actually open to the atmosphere without uh, the chance of having that spike in oxygen and power being used. So you are still going to want some sort of airlock to get out. Otherwise, you'll end up with something like this. <laughs> Moving on, the last thing that we can actually make is ourselves a rover. The rover is going to be made with, firstly, we're going to need some wheels made with just some black dye and steel. And then the rover itself is going to be made with a dash engine, which is basically an upgraded uh, engine. As you can see, we're just using desk plates instead of steel. Everything else is the same. Then we're going to need some dash blocks, steel blocks, and a iron rod. And this is our rover, as you see here. The rover is pretty cool, we just hold shift and right click and this is going to need fuel once again just like the rocket does. So all we have to simply do is put some fuel into here and then it has its own internal inventory which I recommend keeping with a little bit of fuel. This works basically like a horse, we just run around like a horse and it can only go up one block and obviously as it's not a horse, it clearly can't jump. But this will last quite a while, as you see here. But with that, that's now everything going to be in the quote-unquote Tier 2 stage. So now we're going to want to make ourselves the Tier 2 rocket. This is made with a few components from before, as in the rocket nose cone and the fins. But from this, we're now going to easily upgrade everything else. The engine we've covered, the tank is simply made with uh, dash plates instead of steel. And then we are going to need to get ourselves some dash blocks as well. And this gives us our Tier 2 rocket. Once again, we want to prep our tier 2 rocket with some fuel, three buckets to get back in a landing pad or a launch pad, as well as your different items that you're going to want to get. And then this is going to allow us to get to our next planet. The next planet being either Mars or now you're going to be able to make the stay station. But for now, I think that is a good place to call it. If this video helped you out in any way, shape or form, please do not forget to leave a like and subscribe. It really helps me out. And ring the bell button to stay notified when these videos go live. The next video will be out very shortly next week when we are going to be going to Mars and going into the tier 3 stage of things. There is only a handful more planets to go through after this and then we have the space station to explore. But until next time, guys, take care.